In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how you can learn faster by becoming a more efficient searcher and consumer of content on YouTube. Let's get into it. Hey, if we're just meeting, my name is David Matthew and this is Emergent Products. On this channel, I'm excited to teach you the mindsets, strategies, and tactics you'll need to be a better product leader. So whether you're new to product management or mastering the craft, there'll be something for you on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell to know when I publish new content. I used to have quite a bit of time to really learn new skills and study new material, but then I had not one, Not two, three kids. <laughs> as you can imagine with all the kids around, I don't have nearly as much time to devote to honing new skills or consuming new information. But I'm still pretty passionate about learning and getting better at what I do. So this has presented the challenge of how do I get through as much material and learning as possible in the time that I do have. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you two tips that I have for getting through more content quickly and also being a more efficient searcher for information. So when you are trying to find something, you can get to that information a whole lot faster. Tip number one, increase the speed of your casual consumption. If you're like me, there's probably a lot of content that you're trying to get through just in the course of a normal day. This is things like audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube videos or maybe you're taking something like an online course. Well, the easiest way to become more efficient getting through this type of content is simply to increase the playback speed that you're using to watch any kind of video or media content. So I was a skeptic for quite some time on if increasing the playback speed of media would be something that would work for me. I thought maybe I wouldn't comprehend the material quite as well if it was at a faster playback speed or that maybe I would have to keep going back and re-listening to content. But I can tell you now, after having done this for quite some time, that this has made a huge boost in my productivity. So I'd like to share with you a few things that I've learned along my journey to increasing playback speed that I think will be helpful to you. First is that you need to try to ease into it. So I just tried listening to audiobooks a little bit faster. I went to 1.2 speed. And then I was able to increase a little bit from there and a little bit more until I found a speed that was comfortable for me. Then I started applying this to other mediums like podcasts. Found that for podcasts, the conversational nature of most podcasts will lend to a faster listening speed. But really where I started to see the biggest performance boost was when I started using this on YouTube videos or other video content that I was watching. I tend to watch a lot of presentations and a lot of tutorial videos and increasing the speed on those really made a huge difference in my productivity and how much content I was able to consume. So I would advise you to just get started a little bit at a time, bump up your speed for whatever content you're already consuming just a tiny bit, and then go from there to whatever you feel comfortable with. So next is that you may think it will feel uncomfortable to listen at a faster speed. And there's a few reasons why I don't think this will be as true as what you might imagine it would be if you haven't tried it out yet. First of all is that I think when we think about sped up audio or video, we think of an old VCR tape on super speed fast forward where it's got that real chipmunk sounding kind of pitch to it. Now most modern audio or video players, when you do increase the speed, they have technology built into them that will simultaneously lower the pitch to match what it would be with the original content. So even though you're listening at a faster speed, you won't get the distortion of pitch or any other distortion in the audio because you are playing it at that faster speed. For a video like this, where it's just me talking, it will just seem like I'm talking faster. You won't notice any additional changes in the audio. The next thing to consider is the speed that we read at, about 250 words per minute, and the speed that we talk at, about 150 words per minute. So our reading speed is about 1.7 times the speed that we usually talk at. And I found that that 1.7 is usually a pretty good threshold for what feels comfortable when you're listening to material that's sped up. So if you're trying to listen up to that threshold, it usually feels fairly comfortable because your brain is actually primed to be able to consume information up to around that rate. Once you start pushing beyond the speed that you would typically be reading at, 
starts to become a little bit more difficult to push through the material at that speed. Give it a little bit of a try, and I think you'll find that it doesn't feel as unnatural as what you would expect because you're used to consuming content at around that speed when you're reading. So I promise you that you will get used to consuming media at this faster rate, and you'll know you've really kind of arrived at being comfortable with it when you start to think that the normal playback speed is sounding painfully slow. So I never thought I would get to this point, but now whenever I listen to things at the default speed, it just seems so slow, and I instantly want to use my speed controls to ramp up to my preferred speed. Tip number two is to use super speed fast forward to really dial into the content that matters to you as quickly as possible. So shortly after I started increasing the playback speed of videos I was watching, a friend of mine recommended a Google Chrome extension called Video Speed Controller. Now this extension has the unique capability of being able to go up to very high playback speeds. So you can go to 2x, 3x, 5x, 10x speed when watching a video. Now this super speed effect may seem kind of silly, but I've actually been very surprised at how useful it's been for me. One of the things it's allowed me to do is to start watching content at a very fast playback speed instead of using the position slider that you would normally drag around on a video. This has the advantage of being able to actually see and hear the content as it's going at that very fast speed, whereas the position slider would make you jump around, you have to kind of use your mouse, which may be clunky, and you might miss something because it's a little jumpy as you're scrubbing through content. So this very fast playback speed has that advantage. It also works very well with the extension to be able to use keyboard shortcuts. So you can define a default playback speed that you wanna to jump to with a single key. There's another key that allows you to jump back to just normal, regular 100% speed. And then there, you can also ramp up and down by whatever kind of multiplier you want with another key press to go faster or slower. So there are two specific cases where this super speed effect has really been helpful for me. But before I dig into that, I wanted you to briefly consider your mindset around consuming content. When we're watching YouTube, a lot of times we're consuming content just for entertainment, where we sit back and enjoy and watch the content. But you may also be consuming content on YouTube for educational purposes, to teach yourself a new skill, or to find a specific answer to a question that you're searching for. In these cases, it's actually much more beneficial to get through the content as quickly as you can or to have some effective tools to be able to dig to the specific part of the content that contains the information that you're looking for and not have to spend as much time on the things that are not relevant. So this is where the super speed effect can really start to help you out. The first way that it's been helpful for me is when I'm searching for content. So if I search YouTube, for a specific question that I have, I'm gonna get multiple search results, multiple videos that I need to watch to answer my question. So I would recommend for each search result as you're trying to answer a question, you default to watching at an uncomfortable listening speed. So it should be kind of that fast forward effect where you're seeing pictures, hearing audio, and you're listening for things that are relevant to your question. If you see them, then you can stop by a keyboard shortcut and then watch that part of the content to see if it answers your question. But by listening at the faster pace to start with, you kind of can consume the whole video so you get through it and you actually know what the contents of the video is. And if it's not relevant to you, then you've gotten through it very quickly and you're on to the next result to try to see if the next thing is actually answering the question that you're looking for. So default to a fast speed and then use that strategically to dig for the information that you're looking for so you can get to your answer more quickly. This will allow you to be done fast to get to your answer, or it will allow you to get through even more videos to see different perspectives on the answer so that you can see maybe how multiple people have done whatever the thing is that you're searching for, and it will give you a more holistic understanding of the thing that you're trying to do. The other way that this has been useful is to skip content that is irrelevant or that is repetitive. So if I'm watching, let's say, a tutorial video and I'm in a more advanced user and I'm really just trying to see how some creator is doing, let's say, an advanced video editing technique. I may find a good video that they have, do good tutorial, but let's say it's 25 minutes long and I know that somewhere in there they're going to have the piece of content that I'm looking for 
but it's probably not at the beginning and I'm not sure where it's going to be at. So I can start watching that content, maybe watch the beginning at more of a normal playback speed. But then I, when they start doing some of the basic stuff that I already know, like how to create a project file, how to set up things in a certain way that's a little bit more beginner level, I can turn on the super speed effect at that point and then begin that process of watching to see when something is relevant to me, then I can slow down and actually consume the content at that point. So it's been very useful to skip both um, irrelevant content, content that you already know, maybe intros or outros or things that are too, that are too long that you may wanna spend less time on. This also works for ads or kind of sponsorship things in videos that you may wanna just fast forward through and then stop when you get to the good content and not have to be jumping back and forth around in a video with the slider. Now that you're well on your way to becoming a more efficient searcher and consumer of content on YouTube, you can watch these follow-up videos on how to apply these tactics on your own. If you got value out of today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Ah.